Hello everyone, Don the Crown here, and I was just about to head to bed, but then I saw in the Diablo 4 partner discord that they had actually uploaded the wrong information for the legendary aspects for season 5, and so I wanted to sit back down and see exactly all the stuff they had changed. Now, I had done a video also about one of these aspects that I think is basically game-breaking, and uh, they dialed down the numbers on it significantly, which is pretty good. So now it's only going to be about a 360% damage multiplier instead of like potentially a 900% damage multiplier in some cases. Uh, so I still think it's going to be really, really strong, but it's definitely not as strong as it was. But I think that is probably a good thing for sure. So let's go look at these real quick to see kind of what big differences they have. I uh, noticed that they also went through and they actually gave us like weapon damage percentages, which is a good thing. So when enemy falls below 35% life, ball flicked by damage over time, an explosion occurs, which does uh, quite a bit of weapon damage, which is pretty nice. I think this is definitely an improvement. I'm not really sure what the explosion occurs every seven second means. So uh, yeah, I think this is probably just better. Uh, Wild Bolt is uh, the exact same as what it was in the PTR. And so every two seconds, you're gonna yoink enemies to you and they're gonna take 10% damage bonus from all sources. I think it's kind of strange to get a damage bonus from a utility aspect here. Now, don't, this doesn't seem to work on bosses. Uh, and they also made this so that it only works on people, on enemies, every five seconds, as opposed to be able to continuously reapply. So I think that, uh, you know, especially because this is an even number and this is an odd number, you're going to kind of like end up being desynced with this a little bit. But uh, for the most part, it should be pretty darn good. Uh, for sticker thought here, I still don't really like this aspect. We're going to get a whole bunch of thorns while channeling, and then for three seconds afterwards, it increases with item power. And I personally really don't know what builds are going to use this for. So yeah, for sly steps, originally we thought this was going to be 20% of your life is going to need to be lost in order to activate a defensive skill like flame shield or something. But this is actually going to be 50% of your life. Uh, and we can and it has a limit and a cooldown to this, so every 30 seconds. This doesn't work with mobility skills, so this has gone from something that could be like borderline super duper OP to, I'm not sure why you would want to use this type of thing. I really don't like when there is multiple conditionals on here, so you have to lose a whole bunch of your life. And then on top of that, you also have to like have the cooldown up. I don't really like that. I don't really see that this one's going to get used all that much. I think this is kind of a waste right now. Next up, we have Aspect of the Dark Dance. Like I said before, this one I think is actually going to be quite interesting because it allows you to pay for life as opposed to paying your resource, your mana, whatever, and allows you to get a damage bonus while you're doing that, up to 80% damage bonus. And so for things that are channeling skills, I'm pretty sure you could probably snapshot this and just like hold down on that incinerate and like be nuking the boss and get quite a bit of damage here. And it's like a, a resource slot. So you can get this on a ring or something, which is pretty good. Uh, unfortunately for Sorks, like we don't really get ring uh, legendaries anymore since we pretty much have way too many good unique rings and uh, you always want to be using those for the most part. Next up is Creeping Death. This is the one that I, they had posted that this was going to go up to 50%, which would have meant that you could get about 900% multiplicative damage if you have like all of the crowd controls that a class has access to, like, ever, like the most a class has for the most part is nine out of the 11 uh, crowd controls. And like every class has access, up, like all the classes together have a total of 10 they can get to. And Tether, I'm not really sure what that comes from. I think that's a, uh, you know, a NPC thing only, but uh, this is a pretty big number irregardless. You throw this on a two-hander weapon, and it will do quite a bit of damage. Uh, I think it's still worth investing in, but it's definitely gone from being like, holy moly, this is going to be the entirety of the meta, to, okay, this is okay. <laughs> now, next up, we have Prudent Heart. Prudent Heart, uh, you become immune to damage for four seconds. You lose 20% of your life in a single hit. This can only occur once every 60 seconds. Once again, this is a, another defensive that I think is basically worthless. I don't know why you would want to use this. Uh, for the most part, if you're going to be using an aspect, 
you're going to be using an aspect like that's giving you damage reduction all of the time not just like a once every 60 seconds kind of like immunity shield i yeah i don't know what's going on with these different defensive aspects they don't seem to be very good at all next up executioner's aspect so when you kill an enemy with overpower spawn an earthquake this can occur every more than ev once every six seconds so i believe it was like four seconds on the ptr so they nerfed this down a little bit i'm not really sure that this is all that great in the first place because you have to you know kill with overpower and then it spawns an earthquake and it kind of feels a little bit like uh you have to juggle a lot here but maybe there's a build that could be pulled together from this for aspect of the fortress for every 10 percent of your life you're missing you're gonna get up to five percent dr so this can give you uh quite a bit of dr like 25 percent dr at half health this is definitely uh, not as high of numbers as we had seen earlier today so i think this is still okay but for the most part like you're trying to stay full health anyways so that dr isn't really helping you it does make me wonder like if you get hit from like 100 percent health down to like 20 percent health how much of that dr are you getting like any of the dr along the way or is it only like start kicking in once you've already taken the damage which would be bad next up we have anger management so this is actually a little bit better than it was earlier so this was like when you're above 40 fury you're berserk but you lose four fury per second i believe it was like 10 fury per second earlier today so getting in this knockdown to four is definitely a nice change i think they're going to see a lot of barbarians using this just because keeping uptime on berserk can be a kind of a little bit of a annoyance for a lot of builds and uh, this is a good way to get around that completely next up we have moon rage so when enemy is killed there is a five percent chance summon a wolf companion that'll aid you for 20 to 35 seconds and uh now this is also has a lucky hit it, it still i it always had a lucky hit against bosses i just missed that previously so it's not really much change from what was on the ptr i think this is definitely interesting if you're gonna be doing wolf companions we'll see if that's like an actual build this season next up we have rejuvenating so when you drop below 20 spirit there's a chance for your spirit to be instantly refilled to the max exactly the same it was on ptr i think this is definitely interesting you could definitely potentially build some builds around that spirit bond is just like we saw in the ptr a little bit worse than it was earlier today i mean 17.5 percent damage reduction and able to keep all of your companions alive is a pretty solid damage reduction for the most part we don't really get dr that is just like you're just existing uh and this is one of the examples of getting that normally this is something you would like find on a unique item it's like similar almost to getting a harlequin crust which is very very strong piece of equipment next up we have shade mist and so your minions are going to deal 25 percent shadow damage per second to enemies around them the damage lasts for up to five seconds after leaving the aura so it's definitely better than it was earlier today that is quite a bit of damage and if they walk away from the aura they're going to keep getting damaged which i think is very good next up aspect of the cursed aura so you gain an aura that automatically inflicts afflicts nearby enemies with decrepify and iron maiden for four seconds and then in addition cursed enemies spread their curse to additional enemies every like 0.2 seconds uh i think that this is probably better than it was in the ptr and it's definitely nice that like things that get close to you you're going to just curse them automatically plus you can curse things at range and it'll just like proliferate out from them which i think could be pretty darn powerful uh, especially nice maybe for like group play uh, of the great feast each minion drains one essence per second but deals up to 45 percent increased damage with no minions the bonus applies to you and drains five essence per second so I think on the PTR, this is going all the way up to 100% increased damage. Uh, potentially is what this is saying here. Let me make sure that I think the wrong thing. And uh, yeah, actually no, it was maybe only 45%. And so I think that this is definitely a lot better than it was earlier today. Uh, this previously was looking like it was going to be mandatory basically for every build. You're just going to be like putting this on a two-hander and that is your build for Necromancer. And so this is a little bit more uh, lower number, which I think is <laughs> more reasonable for sure. Next up, we actually have all three of the rogue aspects. So 
to of true sight. So damage to inner sight targets will always crit and deal additional critical strike damage. This is pretty good. I'm pretty sure this is when your critical, your inner sight is active. And so this is going to be like just a big damage increase for you. Because if you're you're always gonna crit and you're basically doing double damage. I'm not really sure why they're choosing to do additional 100 percent additional critical strike damage. Because I'm pretty sure this should just be like a you know 100 percent multiplier while this is up. So they could just said and deal hundred percent additional damage. They wouldn't have to clarify crit. So it'd be kind of I'm kind of wondering like what the interactions are there. Next up, cold clip. Your basic skills are always cold imbued. And increased damage to chilled and frozen is now 5 to 20%, which is exactly what we saw on the PTR. I think the same thing here with Clandestine. We're getting up to three ranks of agility and subterfuge skills. It's kind of interesting to see that there is aspects that are just giving you ranks to a particular skill type. Last but not least, the Winter, Jolting, and Fire Starter aspects are all kind of like huge disappointments to me. Uh, jolting actually kind of got nerfed from what it was in terms of proccing. That's like every one second you're going to zap an enemy for a little bit, like actually a decent chunk of weapon damage. When you freeze enemies, they're going to take extra damage. And then fire starter makes it so that when you apply a burn, it's going to do 100% weapon damage as fire damage. But honestly, if you're using any of these and you're not leveling and you don't, you have any better option, you're probably doing something wrong because... Like I said before, uh, these aren't like, going to help your main skill do more damage. These are trying to like supplant your main skill and like kind of in the damage formula. So they're not like adding to the pile. They're just kind of like a side thing. And we're so limited on aspects on Sorcerer that I really can't see anybody using these. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that's all of the aspects. Uh, sorry for having to put out two videos of this. Uh, like I said, the Blizz guys put up the wrong ones at first, but uh, now you have all the info. Thank you guys for hanging out. See you next time.